Howdy, everyone. So let me get you caught up yet again on uh, this cowling work that I've been fooling with for quite a while now. Uh, like I said at the beginning of this video series, I was not entirely pleased with the cowlings in general as far as the initial fit, especially around the propeller. Uh, the rest of it has been very, very nice. It's just the, the front of the cowlings for some reason have been giving me some trouble and it could be my fault um, but initially fitting them to each other it just didn't seem like it was really going to work without a lot of extensive cutting and sanding and things like that um, but I've worked through it as best as I could it's progressing nicely cowling work is very tedious it reminds me a lot of the canopy work where you spend a lot of time getting very little accomplished because you're constantly checking everything multiple times before you do a little bit of sanding and then you got to put it all back together check it again check it again check it again take it apart do a little bit of sanding so it's time consuming and tedious but uh, it is quite satisfying when it does come together and it starts looking the way you hope it will so the top cowling is pretty much set and finished except for I've got to cut out the oil door here. But it is cut and trimmed. It is fully clecoed to the airplane. It is fully clecoed to the bottom cowl. Uh, I'm still going to work on the gaps a little bit. They look really nice. Some of them are actually, there are some areas where the gap is actually tighter than I want it to be. Again, remember that I'm using vinyl wrap, so I need some room in here for both surfaces so that the vinyl can come across and wrap underneath. Uh, so I want a little bit more of a space than maybe some would like if that are going to be painting. Also remember that this top hinge uses a smaller diameter hinge pin, so there's going to be some movement fore and aft on the top cowl and you can grab the front of it and pull it kind of in and out because that smaller pin has a lot of room within the hinge to move but you can position the cowl where you want it and you can kind of hold that in place when you start doing the side hinges and the connecting hinges to the bottom cowling things like that um as always, you want to be sure not to have any stress as much as you can. You want this all to be stress-free, again, within reason. Um, that takes a lot of work. Remember that when you make a change in one area, it's going to affect another area, and that's very evident on the front, and I'll come back to that here in a minute. So this is a look at my side, one of my side seams. This one is pretty good. I am going to open it up a little bit more again because I want room for the vinyl to wrap around. I don't have the side hinges on yet. Um, that's what I'm working on now. I'm getting these hinges drilled and then I'm going to start, I'll install them on the fuselage hinge and then I'll uh, do my drilling. But that's what I'm working on now. So on to the front. Um, so as a, as a, for instance, okay, you can see hopefully how the top and the bottom cowling, how they fit with one another. This seam in here is really nice. When you come around to the other side, it's the same thing. You can see that the fit between the top and the bottom cowling through here, this seam, is really nice. And it comes around, and then I've got my cutout for my hinge pin. But then when you get to the very front, there's this very large step. The bottom cowling seems to stick out a lot further than the top. You can see that hopefully there. It's the same thing on this side. This whole side fits really well until you get to the very front, and then there's this step. Now, I could move the front cowling forward, but then that creates a step here. 
that pushes this front face in relation to the spinner back plate. It pushes this forward. And then there's a step here. Because this face and this face right now are nice and smooth. And I think that's important because of the rotating back plate and the spinner. So keeping these lined up, keeping this nice and lined up, even the curve through here is nicely aligned. It's just this very front part has a step. Um, and again, this is just pre-drilled. I pre-drilled this, but I have not drilled into this part yet. So this is not clamped as, as good as it's going to be. You can see there's quite a gap here, and there's, a, there's quite a gap right here. These do close down. I can almost close that down by hand, but that's not quite done yet. The other problem is with this side, not only do I have a step here where the bottom cowling protrudes forward, it continues all the way around on the inside, and I've got this major step here with an open gap in between. And I really don't know what to do about that. Again, I can't very well just take the front, the top cowling and shift it over because this won't allow it. This cowling goes up behind this. So this can't move. I can't move this left or right in relation to the bottom. Even if I could, this is really nice right here. This transition between the top and the bottom is really nice. If I could, and I did shift this over, then that step would just be on this side. And it would also be on this side because this is really nice. The inside of this one is just fine. So this is my major problem right here. This this open step gap thing. And I don't I don't know what to do with that. Uh, this whole front end took a lot of work. Um, I had to make a lot of um, slow progressions between these two cowlings to get this to come down. I had to do the same thing on this side. I had to do some a lot of trimming and recutting in here on this flange to get this to come down. Because I noticed I couldn't get these front corners to compress and close up this gap. And that's because this center area in here was too tall. And it was, the cowling was like rocking on this part on both sides. And it wouldn't allow this to come down. So I had to shorten this inside so that this can relax and come together. Um, in doing so, I weakened the flange that's in here, this stepped flange that's underneath this top part. That has been weakened because I cut it down further and further and further. So I'm going to have to backfill on the back side. I'm going to have to reinforce that. I'm going to use some epoxy and some um, some flocks to uh, beefen that up before I drill it. So again, it's those kinds of things you want to look out for. You know, I, I couldn't get this front corner to close, and I realized that it was pivoting on this part here, so I had to modify this part to get it to compress so that this gap would close. Um, and again, like I said, these gaps in here, you can move them around just by moving the cowling. I don't know if you could see that. I can I can open up that gap by pulling on the cowling and close it back up um, because this, like I said, this hinge pin is small. But what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and close up this gap. I'll move the cowling back to close up that gap and I'll hold it there. And then when I have this hinge in place and I go to drill it, that will help hold this back a little bit. And it's not a lot. I mean, you can move this around pretty easily. So there's not, there's not going to be a lot of stress on this. And on the bottom, I just got the holes drilled and clecoed, but there are no hinge pins or hinges on the bottom. It's just that extension plate comes off of the bottom of the fuselage forward 
the cowling kind of rests up against that and then you drill through the cowling and that aluminum plate match drill it and then you add uh, nut plates on the inside to the plate itself so this these three locations will just be screws up into nut plates and I've got the same three drilled on this side when you go to drill those um, make sure that the bottom cowling is centered left to right an easy way to do that is I fit the bottom cowling on but I left the sides nice and long. I didn't trim the sides. I left those so that they would lay over top of the fuselage skin. And that helped hold it left and right. So I was able to do these holes and get these clecoed. I left these couple at the very end off so that the, the uh, cowling can come down and then go up and over the side of the fuselage. That helped hold the cowling centered left and right. Then I went ahead and did the three holes underneath on this side and the three on the other side. Once I had that bottom pinned up and centered, then I could come back and trim this off nice and flush with the skin of the fuselage. Now that that's done, I can go ahead and start doing my, my holes for the hinge. And like I said, when I go to drill those holes, I'll make sure that the cowling is pulled back so that these gaps are closed up a little bit better. Again, you want to maintain your distance between the front and the, your spinner backing plates, and that's for both halves. And you want that to be nice and even and a nice transition from the top cowling to the bottom cowling. You don't want to a step between the cowlings and you want to maintain your height between the the, uh, the backing plate and the top of the cowling and again you can adjust that by before you drill these holes down here and before you put this hinge on you can take the whole cowling and kind of move the front up and down which is going to take this back part here and kind of move it in and out. You want to have all that set before you start attaching clecos and drilling holes. So with everything set up the way that it is now, like I said, I'm working on the actual side hinges here. The, the half, one half of the hinge is already riveted to the fuselage. I'm working on the cowling half of the hinge, getting those drilled. Then I'll take the cowling off, I'll put the hinge in, I'll put the hinge pin in, put the cowling back on, and start match drilling. So I'll get that done, and I'll talk to you guys here in a little bit. I'll give you a total, let me give you a better view here of the cowling so far. Alright, I'll talk to you guys later.